Now, I'll call it this stem cell transplant. I just want to make a couple of points about. And the first is, is that the mortality, that is, the death from the transplant, is very low, 1% uh, or less. <clears throat> and it's available for up to half of patients with multiple myeloma. However, the stem cells that are given back to the patient are contaminated with tumor cells. And secondly, this is not a curative procedure. You will very likely relapse. The average time uh, to relapse is about two years. But I have seen patients who have gone 10 years or longer with just a single transplant without any treatment uh, other than the transplant. So it is quite variable and your doctor cannot tell you up front whether you will be in the group who will go 10 years of your transplant or whether you will be a person who will relapse, progress within six months or a year. Now, two other points about transplant is, is should you have one or two? And uh, one well-known institution in this country feels very definitely that a patient with myeloma should have two autologous stem cell transplants. Uh, the French did a study, I won't show you the results of that study, but they concluded after a very large randomized study that if a patient got a very good response or a complete response from the first autologous stem cell transplant, that a second transplant did not add anything uh, to that patient, no benefit. And in this country, most physicians actually end up today giving a single transplant. The second question is, is should the transplant be given early? And by that, I mean the transplant would be given as soon as you had recovered from the effects of stem cell collection. Or should you, if you're on, for example, uh, Revlimid and dexamethasone and you're responding nicely and you're tolerating the drug well, should you continue with that drug? Well, we don't know the correct answer for that, and it ends up pretty much a choice of the patient and his or her physician. And in that situation, if one delays, one continues with the induction scheme, and then when the patient relapses down the road, then the patient goes ahead with the autologous stem cell transplant. And again, there's no right or wrong approach from this standpoint. Now, what about the patient who is not eligible for a transplant? That is, the patient who is elderly, or the patient who has other disease, heart, stroke, other malignancy, and the like, and is not a candidate for transplant. What can be done for them? Well, a combination of malphalan, prednisone, and thalidomide is an option. And this is a study from the uh, Italian myeloma group in which 255 patients who were deemed ineligible for transplant, and as I mentioned, these patients would have been over 65 years of age, or they would have had other disease, heart, or the like, that rendered them inadequate for the transplant. Uh, these patients were randomized to receive the malphalan, prednisone, thalidomide, or malphalan and prednisone in the same dose, same schedule. They were treated for six months, and as you can see, the response was 76% in the MPT, 48% uh, in the malphalan and prednisone, Complete responses, 16% versus 2% uh, favoring MPT, and three-year survival was superior. 
percent versus 64 percent. But as these patients were followed up, the overall survival, the overall survival was basically the same in uh, both groups of patients. There have been five prospective randomized uh, studies comparing uh, uh, malfilan prednisone thalidomide with malfilan and prednisone. Uh, uh, three of them show a modest prolongation of overall survival, and two did not. So it's not uh, 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 a black and white situation. <clears throat> this is a study from the French myeloma group in which Dr. Facone and his colleagues uh, treated uh, over uh, 447 patients who were 65 to 75 years of age. Uh, as I mentioned a moment ago, these would be considered ineligible for transplant and randomized them to receive malfilan prednisone thalidomide but here, the dose of thalidomide was increased to 400 milligrams daily, if tolerated, and the treatment was continued for a year, or malfilan prednisone, same dose, for a year, or a third regimen called, uh, uh, in which the patients were given VAD, uh, uh, and then were given malfilan as the, uh, as the uh, treatment in a dosage of 100 milligrams, which is a low dose for transplant. And then after the patients had been transplanted, uh, they received a second autologous stem cell transplant, given their stem cells again, and then followed. And when this study was reported, uh, 10 or 12 years ago, uh, everyone was very, very impressed with it. It was a, what we call a phase two study. And here we see, finally, uh, a study in which this regimen, this identical regimen, a uh, double transplant with low dose uh, malfilan, so to speak, uh, compares to other treatments. And we see PFS is progression-free survival, 28 months for the MPT, 18 months for the malfilan prednisone, but only 19 months for the malfilan 100. And the overall survival was 52 months for the MPT, over four years, which is very impressive. 33 months for malfilan prednisone, which is about what we would expect with that regimen and the 100 uh, milligram transplant only slightly better at 38 uh, 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 months overall survival. And the point I want to leave you with with this slide is that no matter how good a new drug is or combination of drugs, it must be compared with our standard best regimen. And this comes around to clinical trials and the need for you to participate in clinical trials, if at all possible. You'll hear more about this uh, a little bit later uh, from Ms. Levy. And uh, it's the only way that we really learn uh, uh, what is best for the patient. <clears throat>